Eddie Murphy, welcome to the Daily Social Distancing Show. Oh, thanks for having me. I feel like you, you, you know, you seem like the kind of person who's almost the least affected by the pandemic because I feel like you always stayed at home before the pandemic. I've been sheltering in place and washing my hands constantly and using Perel for over 30 years. <laughs> yeah, I, that's something I've known about Eddie Murphy my whole life. They're going like, Eddie Murphy washes his hands. Like, that was a thing I knew about, I knew Eddie Murphy, comedian, jokes, actor. But then the third fact I knew about you was, Eddie Murphy washes his hands. He's terribly clean. He's a terribly clean man. <laughs> Very clean. <laughs> when was the last time you were sick? 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 Yeah. Uh, maybe about two years ago, I caught the flu at the Golden Globes. That's why Eddie Murphy doesn't go out. And the time before that, I had caught the flu at the Oscars like two or three years before that. It's those big crowds of people getting trophies. The virus <laughs> in the room. <laughs> people have grown up with you. People have, have emulated you. There's no stand-up comedian who hasn't been touched by you. There's no film or there's no comedic actor who doesn't have a little bit of Eddie Murphy in how they perform. We see them coming to America now. You know, it's like it's like a celebration of a movie that was genre-defying back then. I mean, I remember watching that movie going like, I've never seen Africans portrayed like this in an American film. You know, seeing like regal Africans, seeing rich Africans. I mean, Zamunda was, was, was Wakanda before Wakanda in that way. It was just like, what, what is this place, you know, where the royal penis is being cleaned? You know what I mean? <laughs> when, you, uh, when, you, when you decided to make Coming to America the sequel, I'm, I'm sure it wasn't an easy choice. Why did you say yes? It wasn't easy. It, it, it was a totally easy choice. It kind of happened organically. It wasn't like uh, somebody pitched it. And I was like, oh, what happened was the movie became a cult movie over the years. Right. And, uh, and I've, re I, I've realized, you know, there's an audience for this movie. If I could figure out a way to connect those dots, there's an audience for a sequel to the movie. But that was, you know, 25 years into it, people started, you know, dressing up as on Halloween. People get dressed up as some of the characters, and they have a, a restaurant in LA. Uh, I think it's called Fat Sal's. They turn their restaurant into a McDowell's restaurant. Right, right. And on VH1 shows coming to America 24 hours straight on Christmas. So it's right. stuff like that, you know. So that's what made me go, there's an audience for the movie. I loved how the movie. It was it was new enough to be like you know new for a new generation, but I love that you guys brought back so many of the same characters. I mean, like my my favorite characters easily are the barbershop fellows. Like I mean, you know what I mean. Everyone from Saul to the dudes in the chairs. Did you ever go out into the streets as those characters just to test the characters in real life? Oh yeah, when we first put them on, we go out and play around in those makeups. Like you would go out as the old dude from the barbershop. Absolutely. A couple of times we went out and had those makeups just to talk to people and, you know, see if the makeup is working. Because I don't know if this story is true or not, but Arsenio told me that you wanted to see how convincing you could be as an old man. And you, you decided to go and, like, flirt with older ladies just to see if you were in, like, the right brackets. No, not, not, for, not to see how convincing I was, to see how convincing the makeup would be. So right. I flirted with some older older woman when I was an, an older man. And? <laughs> and? And I got the pussy. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Actually, some of the easiest pussy I ever had. <laughs> Be surprised how easy old women are. <laughs> oh, man. You, you, you... Oh, your back is so strong. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever feel like living like that? Or like, not, not living like that, but going out like that? Because Eddie Murphy is, is, is an insane superstar. I mean, I remember there was a time when you went around with bodyguards, but it was like for a short moment in time. And then you were like, I don't, I don't do this. But I wonder if Eddie Murphy, like, have you ever just thought to yourself, I'm just going to go out as a different character and see what life is like? I used to go out with bodyguards back in the early days when I toured or when I was at the club every night. Right. Around people drunk every night. And you're one of the faces. You should have some people around you. So but after the, after that period, I never, you know, you know, I've got rid of them and I kinda don't really go out that much, you know. So I kinda have my little world that I'm in and I'm doing a lot of going out. <laughs>
And if I do, it's to some controlled place. Right, right, right. It feels like you were always... First part of your, com- your first part of your question was what? No, I wanted to know if you just went out like that ever. You know, if you if just to be like free as Eddie Murphy, just to just to be like, yeah, I can just do whatever I want. Yeah, I could, could just go out as as me. You know, to controlled places. You know, for the most part. And I never put on the makeup because you know, you're not really free if you go out in those makeups. It's like I'm free. <laughs> I'm this other guy. <laughs> you know what? I did a movie called Norbit years ago, and uh, uh, I had no mustache. It's the only movie I've ever done in my whole career where I had no mustache. And uh, I'm with no mustache. I'm unrecognizable. Like me, just oh. walk. If I cut my mustache off. I could walk into, I literally have gone to Mr. Childs with no mustache and walk past, you know, photographers and all this, walk right past, going up to people that I knew, famous people, and talking to them for a second, and they'll be like, who is this? And they'll realize <laughs> I'm a total wow. person. It's and just I, don't that. Like I don't like it. I didn't like it. I didn't like the whole being just a guy, who, you know, I was just, you know, <laughs> I, think, I think I'm ugly. I think I'm ugly. <laughs> <laughs> the way they were acting, I think without my mustache, I might be not just a regular guy, but an ugly regular guy. Because the girls wouldn't give me no kind of energy or nothing. I walk around. It was very, sh- I hated it. I grew my mustache back <laughs> as quickly as possible. <laughs> when, we, when we look at your career now, um, you've done everything. And you've always talked about how your family is your legacy. But selfishly, your fans want more stand up from Eddie Murphy. Are you coming back to the stage? Yeah, that the plan was I took off from making movies in 2011. Right. And six, seven years go by, and I'm like, hey, okay, all right, I'm, I've, I've recharged my batteries, and I want to go do some stuff. And I was like, you know, it would be really cool to do some stand-up, but I don't want to just jump back out there having not had a new movie out in years. So I was like, let me go do some stuff to, re- to kind of remind them <laughs> that I'm funny. So I, I did a Dolomite, and then we went back to Saturday Night Live. And then the plan was to do Coming to America. We did that. Then the plan was to go and do stand-up. But then the pandemic hit. So this last year, when we were all sheltering, that was the year I would have been out trying to get my shit back together. Right, 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 right. So as soon as we get back to, you know, people could sit in the room again and you could go, then I'm going to go start workshopping and getting the act together. And the plan is to do it again. Yeah, well, we're looking forward to it. It's... uh... It's been an amazing journey having you in our lives. Thank you for uh, releasing the movie. Thank you for getting back on stage and thank you for being you. Oh, Keep washing your hands. Thank you for being in the movie. To, oh, to, no, you ki- to, are you kidding me? Vivignana, to, to, to Tatsi. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great name. <laughs> I was like, I know it's authentic because he's from South Africa, so I know that's <laughs> I made up all those other names. Those are not real names. Most of them, like uh, uh, my mother's name in it was uh, Aeolion. That's not, a, that's not a real name. I totally made that name, Jaffe Jofa is a totally made up name. <laughs> <laughs> so Tatsi Bibignana sounds very authentic. It, it, it really does. Well, Bibignana, a lot of people don't, Bibignana is actually like, it's a play on, it, it, technically, if you say it properly, it means small penis. So there was a little joke, inside joke for, for South Africans. Exactly. Yeah, like my brother came up to me and he was like, hey man, who, who called you that? Because I don't know if these Americans know what they called you. And I was like, oh, no, that, that was on our side. He's like, oh, because that sounds like... It that is sounds South like a, something, too? No, no, no. That was just like a South African. It was just like play on the name. And then it was a last name that sounds Totatsi. like it. Totatsi. It sounds, sounds like, like it. it. Little Dick Totatsi. That's what your name. Bibin Yanami. <laughs> Totatsi. Well, well it, sounds, it sounds like it. Sounds like small dick. But it isn't. It sounds like it. Okay. You know, just to give it some of that. Just to give it some of that. But thank you for having me, man. Thank you so much. Thanks for doing it. I'm excited to see you on the, on the stage again, Eddie. And... Um, yeah, man, keep washing your hands, keep doing you, and I appreciate you. Yeah, man, I appreciate you too, and thank you for having me, and congratulations for all the success you've been having, man. You really thank really you, sir. funny brother. This is The Daily Social Distancing Show with Trevor Noah.